Ooh. Ooh, just gave that one away. All right, here we go. New type of proof called indirect. Indirect proof. Are we still doing statements reasons? Yes, we are. We're still going to write them that way. Are we still doing givens? Yes, we are. It's just a new approach to it, a new approach. Before I even get into and let you sniff or taste what an indirect proof is, I got to make sure you guys can able to, are able to do something for me. And that is find the contradiction. What a contradiction is, it, two statements that cannot, cannot happen at the same time. It is geometrically impossible for these two to happen at the same time. So I've listed three statements about triangle DEF here. Three statements. Two of them at the same time not happening. Are you kidding me? Absolutely not. It is impossible for these two to happen on triangle DEF at the same time. You and your group got one minute. Find those two statements that you know geometrically and your knowledge of vocabulary. No way those two are happening at the same time. It is geometrically impossible to happen. Talk it over. You got a minute. It is impossible for these two to happen at the same time. On the same triangle. Got to remember what scalene meant. Not saying that's part of it, but. Any groups confident? Yep, Dylan? One and three. One and three are the contradictions. All right, what's scalene mean again? No sides equal, but in a triangle, if two angles are equal, that's a what type? Isosceles, you can't have a scalene and an isosceles in the same diagram. All right, if anybody thought it might've been one and two, well, there's your right triangle, three, four, five, there's scalene. So it can be right and scalene at the same time. And if anybody thought it was two and three, Here's a triangle that fits two and three. Angle E would be my right angle. How many degrees in every triangle? Buck 80, so I have 90 left over, correct? So if D and F are congruent, each of them could be. There you go. A right triangle where D and F are congruent. So it's gotta be one and three. Okay, why? I introduce it this way today because when we do an indirect proof, the main Goal of an indirect proof is to have a contradiction in your statements. Two statements that can never happen at the same time. All right. Look, I put some directions here, steps to an indirect proof. That's really if you just lose your train of thought one day and you're on your own and want to review those steps. I'm not reading them to you. Best way to do it. Jump right into the fire. Here we go. Hey, give or take, we've probably done about 100 proofs so far this year, give or take. Never has this come up on one of those 100. What, am I, what is coming up in this proof that you have, we have never seen before, ever? What's in the proof statement? The not. I have never asked you to prove something is not happening. Well, there's the first signal to you. If I'm asking you something to prove something's not happening, it is time to do this proof in an indirect style. That is the key to, hey, how do I know whether to do an indirect proof or not? Well, look at the proof statement. If you're proving something's not happening, it's got to be done indirectly. Statement one, reason one. Anything changed there? We still got to write our givens in. You're welcome. They're already there. Still got to write them in. Also, just a quick note about the givens. They're always true. They're not, they're always true. Okay. They're always true. They're never false. You use all of them, right? The givens are always true. 
Here's where it starts to get different when I do a proof indirectly. We are going to start an indirect proof after the givens by assuming, assuming the opposite of the proof statement. What's the opposite of the proof statement? A is congruent to C. We're going to assume that that is true. That A is congruent to C. So we take our proof statement and we write down the opposite and say it's true. And the reason why it's, we're just going to assume it's true. Assumption. So right after we write our givens down, we get our assumption, which comes from the opposite of the proof statement. All right, let's watch where this leads us now. Watch by assuming A and C are true. Watch where this leads us. And I'm basically just going to do this first one with you. You're going to help me out along the way, but I'm just going to push you in the right direction. You see these two overlapping triangles? Triangle BAE and triangle BDC? Uh, help me get them congruent. Help me get them congruent. All right, can you get those two congruent? Remember our five ways? I'm not going to write them down, but we had five ways in unit four to prove triangles congruent. Prove these two congruent for me. We already know A congruent to C. We're assuming that's true. That gives us an angle. And what do we already know from the givens? A, B, and B, C. That gives us a side. So we're almost there, right? We're almost there. You guys in your group see anything else I could use to get them? I'm one step short to get them congruent. And I'm, this is, I know it's a new type of proof, but this isn't new. Proving the triangles can grow. That's not a new topic. Where else, what else can I use up here? What else can I use to uh, make these triangles actually congruent to each other? Max? Everyone, all right, it's got, they share angle B. All good? Yep. Where is he going with this? Just relax. Let me do my magic. Uh, you just got to tell me the method now. I know it's either angle side angle or angle angle side. It depends if this side or this side is in between your two angles. If you're having a hard time seeing it, what do I suggest? Draw it out if you have to. Yep, draw out a single triangle. Mark your angles and your sides and see if that side's in between or not. So what do we got? Triangle BAE. Congruent to triangle. Hey, if I go BAE, how do I have to name the other one? It's important. BCD. All right, going back to my a question a minute ago, is this side in between or not? In between? Yep, so it's going to be by... Angle side angle, all right. Oh, that's cute. The triangles are congruent. So what did we learn in unit four? The triangles are congruent. Yeah, what about CPCTC? I know that usually came next, but what does that actually mean? Any, net, any side or any angles now are equal, correct? BD. That's a side in my orange triangle. It should now be congruent to what in my yellow triangle? BD and what? Everyone agree? That's CPCTC? So BD is now, is now congruent to BE by CPCTC. And you are lucky right now, your paper is not bursting into flames. We got a big problem here. Huge problem. Anybody see it? Look at your writing right now. And in, in the statements column, we have a huge problem. What's our problem? Anybody see our huge problem right now in our statements column? Oh, they are congruent? What was given? They're not. This can't happen. This can't happen. Well, let me ask you this. What led us to this point that they are congruent? What led us here? The triangle. Keep going. Keep working backwards. Yeah, us assuming that this was true. True or false? 
Definitely false. So that must mean assumption is false. Everyone with me so far? So if the assumption is false, what's got to be true then? The opposite, which is A is not equal to C. See where we went with that. Let me do it one more time, a little slower. We're all in agreement that this is false. Yes, false? It's got to be, because we said they weren't in the givens and they're always true. So this is a false statement. What led us here? By assuming A is congruent to C. So now we know A congruent to C is a false statement. This is false now. We see why this is false, because this one is. So if this is false, what's got to be true? The opposite, which is A is not congruent to C. See how we, let, we went there. We're going to do more. So now that we have a contradiction in our statements, we can now say, all right, yep, A is not congruent to angle C. And here's our final reason. What led us all here again? Assumption, the assumption we thought was true, assumption led to a false statement. I'm going to use the word we've been using today, which is it led to a contradiction. Our assumption led to a contradiction, so the opposite has to be true. And whoa, whoa, whoa. Not done yet. Here's the other new part about this. You're going to prove to me that you know where this contradiction is. I want what lines do the contradictions occur on? Step this and step this are your contradiction. So for us, it would have been the given one, right? Right here. BD not equal to BE, step one. And in what step did we contradict it? Step five. So you're going to put the two brackets parentheses, braces, I don't care. You're going to put this two steps where your contradiction occurred. So real quick, let's sum up an indirect proof before we do the last one together. You start out by assuming the opposite of the proof statement is true. You always do the opposite of the proof. And your goal, hey, your goal is to have a contradiction. And I'm going to tell you this, your contradiction is always going to come from the givens. You will always contradict one of the givens, all right? Always. Probably which one is it always going to be easier to contradict? The not equal one, okay? You will always contradict one of the givens. Questions on the basic one before we get to a more advanced one coming up. This one's going to be a long one, by the way. Ten-stepper coming up. Brace yourself. Question here. All right, suck it up. Here we go. First off, right off the bat. How do I know I have to do this indirectly? Because I'm not, I'm throwing, yes, I know on the test on Thursday, it's going to be the only type of proof, but we got a midterm in two months. How am I going to know that, oh, I got to do this one out of four proofs indirectly? There it is, right in the proof statement. I'm proving something's not happening, so it's got to be done indirectly. So the given's already written. So now comes the assumption. Where do you get your assumption from? The opposite of the prove, no, prove statement. It's always the, you're assuming the opposite of the prove statement is true. So BD does not bisect AC. The opposite, BD bisects AC is my assumption. We always look at the prove statement for my assumption. Last proof, I told you where to go. Prove these triangles congruent. Let's go. Not anymore. I'm not going to tell you where to go. you got to figure out where to go on your own now. Look at the two givens. You're going to contradict one of them eventually. Let's make a good decision here. Which out of the two do you think it's going to be the easiest to say the opposite of or contradict? Out of those two, ABC is not isosceles and ABD is an altitude. Which one is it going to be a little bit easier for us to contradict? ABC is not isosceles. And how do we contradict that, kids? By saying it is isosceles. If you, if somewhere in your statements you can write this, you got a contradiction. 
you've just contradicted one of the givens. If somewhere that appears in your statements, you have a contradiction. And based on all the work we did in unit four, we should be able to do this. Show me ABC's isosceles. Because if you can write that, it's going to be a contradiction. All right. So can you get ABC to be isosceles with all this info now? Let's find out. How, how do you make a triangle? How do you make a triangle isosceles? How, how do I make a triangle isosceles? I can have two sides, sides equal or I can have two angles, angles equal. Either one's going to work. All right. Help me. Anything else? Anything you want to tell me about the diagram? We'll eventually get there. Remember, it's 10 steps, so it's going to be a while. Anything about the diagram? True. Oh, we don't want that. 15, go ahead. Oh, yeah, it does. Oh, yeah, it does. Got to have that in there. Remember, I'm trying to make it isosceles, so let's start pushing ourselves towards there. I don't know where we're going to go next, but four. Okay, AD congruent to DC. And where did we get the bisects from? The assumption, right? The assumption. Use your assumption as a given. Definition of bisects. Now, it looks like... You guys are pushing me towards proving the triangles congruent, it looks like. And that's okay. That's good. But that looks like where we're going right here because I got a, two pairs of sides right now. So it looks like you guys want me to prove the triangles congruent so we can go from there. But I still need one more thing. And that is, do you remember what that bad boy meant from this unit? Altitude. All right, we got to remember what that meant. What do we got? 19? Woo! Um, it's perpendicular to AC. So what's forming here? Ellie, where? At A, B, B, and B, C. There you go. I got right angles here. So say they're right angles. Angle B, D, A. And angle, what do I got? B, D, C. Our right angles. Now, I don't want to write, I know we've been writing what? Perpendicular lines form right angles. Perpendicular lines form right angles. I don't have perpendicular lines. What do I have instead? Definition of an altitude or altitudes form right angles. I'm fine with that too. Yeah. And then what? Now we got to say they are congruent. Yep. I don't think this is going to be HL. So we got to say they're congruent. Oh yeah. 10 steps halfway home. Oh my God. My wrist is hurting me. Suck it up. This is honors. No one wants to hear about your worries or injuries. Because you know what you know what happens when I hit hear too much complaining. I go over the phone. You know what number I dial? Wine one one. <laughs> Yes, wine one one because sooner or later you know he's gonna have to come pick you up. The wambulance. Yep. Yep. All right. So zip it, suck it up. I think these two triangles are congruent now. All right. They're congruent. Triangle B A D. Congruent to triangle B C D. Method. 18 method. Yep. All right, great. You got the triangles congruent. I asked for the whole thing to be isosceles. Where are you going from here? You got the triangles congruent, which is a good move. Excellent move. But I need the whole triangle to be isosceles. So where are you going from here then? Where's the connection? 2, 6, 26. You go A and C. If anybody was feeling A, B congruent to B, C, you could do that too by C, B, C, T, C. You're uh, choose your own adventure there. I'll go A congruent to C. Oh, if A is congruent to C, what type of triangle do we have? 
And now it's isosceles, so let's write that contradiction down. Triangle ABC is isosceles. You know it's wrong too, but you're still writing it down. It feels so bad. Triangle ABC is isosceles. Now, can we clean this reason up? Because I'm tired of seeing in a triangle, congruent sides are across from congruent angles. You're telling me it's isosceles. You're not telling me sides or angles are equal. All right, so I don't want in a triangle congruent sides are across. That doesn't tell me it's isosceles. You could start off within a triangle, sure. Why is this one? We picked A congruent to C, so why is it isosceles? Two congruent angles imply isosceles triangle. And then what's happening on your paper right now? What do you have written down? Two statements that definitely contradict each other, right? It's not isosceles. It is isosceles. It's not isosceles. It is isosceles. Well, the givens always uh, rank higher, and they're true. So this statement is false. What led us to this false statement? The old assumption up here, which we now know is false. So the opposite, I have, I'm not going to go up. The opposite must be true. So BD does not bisect AC. And that is assumption led to a contradiction. And I should have mentioned this when we first wrote this down in the first proof we did. Uh, no, 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 no shorthand. Altac, not acceptable. Okay. Like CPCTC, there's no abbreviations here, no shortened. Assumption led to a contradiction. I don't even know. That doesn't even look right. And I, I don't even care. I'm just going to write A, C, Z, Y. There you go. Don't care. It's right or not. And I spelled it with an I. I don't care. You know what? I'll just add the A in there too. All right. There you go. Does he know that's not spelled? Yeah, I know it's not spelled. Right. I'm just going to leave it there. Because that does that bug some of you? Anybody? Just one person. Does that bug that I'm going to leave it up there? That makes my day. That makes me happy. At least one person out of the 28 that bugs made my day. That makes me smile. That makes my find my heart. Where's the contradiction? Always from your givens. And then look where you're contradicting your givens. Step nine. Yep. Questions? Try the next one out on your own or within your group. And then I will post the uh, correct answer up here. Or the correct proof. For shit, it's not an answer. We're looking at nine steps for this one. Nine coming up. You know you're on the right track. Nine stepper. Yep. We need a packet. Okay. Keep showing it to me. We check it. 